This time we come to the Word of God. This morning, I will let us look at First Corinthians seven one to sixteen, talking about the beauty of marriage. Let us look at the Word of God in First Corinthians seven one to sixteen. Now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to be married, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own lot wife, and each woman her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise, for the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have the authority、uh, over his own. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer. But then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, as a concession, not a command, I say this. I wish that all were as myself am, as I myself am. But each has his own gift from God, one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married, I give this charge: not I, but the Lord. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband, and the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest, I say, I, not the Lord, that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? This comes to the Lord in prayer. Our heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your word. This is something that we need to understand clearly, so that we can live according to your will. So, Holy Spirit, please abide in us. And open our hearts and minds so that we can understand your truth. Thank you for always being present with us, and that the Spirit of Truth dwells in us and guides us in our truths. We are grateful to you, Lord, and we pray that you will rule this time so that my words and our meditations will be pleasing to you, and give us, Lord, power and strength from you, Father, to live according to your word. Give us. A joy in your leading, so that we will submit to your will. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. There are two things that help us to understand very clearly what Paul is teaching us. First of all, is the sexual immorality that is in the Corinth church. It has spread throughout, and the main. Religion of this city of Corinth is full of prostitution. Every night, thousands of prostitutes from the temple would go down into the city to commit a、um, prostitution, and you can say that is an alternative lifestyle of the Corinthians. And we see that the people in Corinth were very open. "Quote unquote," open in sexuality, and so they will call a woman, a Corinthian woman, to be a prostitute. No matter where, if they call it, oh, that's a Corinthian woman, that would be a prostitute. And the second thing we see in this passage is that there is the pride of the a spiritual pride of the Corinthian believers. In the last message that we have studied together, in verse. In chapter six, we have learned of a group of people who consider themselves that they have freedom in the Lord, so they can have 
sex outside of marriage. They can have sex with prostitutes. They can have sex with others who are not their wives, and that has nothing to affect uh, their influence, their relationship with God. But Paul criticized them and accused them and say that mar- sex is only within marriage, and we see that sex outside of marriage is always a sin. We have to hold firm to this and know this that. Sit that sex before marriage and outside of marriage is always sin. We must run and flee away from sin outside of marriage. The response of these people who are open to sex,、um, in contrast, is another group of people who say that you should not have any any sex in marriage. They see that oh, the danger of fire. Can destroy a house and bring about destruction, so they decide never to touch upon it. Whether if it's fire to cook or fire to keep warm, they don't want it. They rather to live than in coldness than to live with fire. So they don't want to touch a woman. And so some Corinthians think of that way, and so they even. Stay away from sex in marriage, but the word of God through this t- today help us to see clearly and have a right、um, understanding about sex. First of all, we God wants us to have harmony in our marriage. In verse one to six, marriage is not all about sex. So in First Corinthians seven one says, now concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a woman. I'm sorry, for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. Because of the situation in the Corinth church, some people responded and say, oh, is the men say it's better not to even have sex with a woman, not to even touch a woman. And another translation says that it's better not to even marry a woman, but. The words to touch a woman talks about sexual relationships with a woman. The ESV version here says that to not have sexual relations with a woman. So here, what they're trying to say is that to not have a wife, so you don't have to sleep with a wife, is better. That's what they're saying is that you don't even have sex with anybody, not even your your wife. But we see in this passage that sex is something is very important in marriage. But marriage is not just for sex. Not that you just get married so that you can have sex. Some people think that way. Oh, let me get married. Let me marry a wife so that I can、um, have sex. No, sex in marriage is important. But for that helps the believers to avoid、um, sexual immorality. We see that marriage meets your sexual needs. In verse two, it says, "But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband."、Uh, in Vietnamese, I have to add in the word "own." In English, it's very clear: his own wife and each woman her own husband. If your headphones are staticky, turn off your cell phones around you, and it will not be staticky. The some women at the Corinth church did not have the experience of having sex with their husbands, and though, and so the men of the Corinth church would find it in prostitutes, and so in verse in this verse it says each man should have his own wife, that is sexual relationship with his wife. So we this verse confirms the beauty. And goodness of sex in marriage with one man, one woman only, their own wife and their own husband. Here it says with her own husband, not with、um, you know a husband that goes around. So we see that when we don't meet the sexual needs in marriage, it can lead to sexual immorality. For this is a regular relationship. That,、uh, Between husband and wife, and so the apostle Paul was saying that you should increase sex in marriage rather than decrease. In the London Times magazine, in twenty seven, in twenty oh seven, it says tonight, not tonight, my my dear, 
actually not every night. So this article talks about Emily. She's 37 years old, and she is a lawyer, a very successful lawyer, who lives with a husband and a child of two years old. According to her friends, her um, she had a wonderful marriage, but recently she came to a sexual um, a sexual professional. And she was suffering, and she found out that her husband of five years committed adultery, and she felt like her life was just falling apart. She was a good woman, right? She cared for her husband and loved her husband, but when they looked into it deeply, they found that Emily did not really、um, have sex with her husband for many months, and when. He inquired about this. She defended herself and got upset. She said that she is too busy, too busy with her work, and to care for her child. That any time that is for sex, there is no time for it in her life. And so,、uh, Doctor Transper saw that Emily's life was too busy, and it did not bring about. Success in marriage. With each day, more so, we see that the woman between twenty to four years old, they see that sex is something that they don't need. In the bedroom, there is no agreement. If a man is older, the woman have to.、Uh, the woman think that the man has to understand her. And so the writer of this says that women see that they are so、uh, busy that they deserve things that belong to themselves only, and so they are affected. And so we see that when we don't have this、um, need met, it leads to a lot of brokenness in the family. We see that oftentimes it is the root of some problems, and so the words of Apostle Paul in Corinthians seven twelve: "You must increase sex in marriage rather than decrease." And so, because of this, we have to see that marriage gives you an opportunity to serve one another. Marriage helps the husband and wife. To serve one another, in verse three to four, it says here that the husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. The husband and wife who fears the Lord will not use sex as a weapon of cold war, or a reward to、um, confine the other person to go along with your will. Never. The husband and wife who truly loves the other will have true joy to meet the desires and needs of the others. The apostle Paul wants to emphasize service in this in marriage. This does not.、Uh, Require、uh, things that you have to meet, but to it's a pleasure to do. Not that you have the responsibility to me, but to say I am willing to serve you. This is the attitude that brings about meeting the needs of sexual needs of the husband and wife to protect the husband and wife from a culture that is so immorally、uh, down in. Sexual immorality. The life of a wife and a husband who fears the Lord is to rejoice and to be willing to meet the needs of one another. The husband to the wife and the wife to the husband. When the husband and wife complete their responsibility to one another, the marriage is a good spiritual environment. Marriage. It's a beautiful spiritual environment. Why is that? Because in verse f- 
5 to 7 to 6, it says, Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement, for a limited time, that you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again, so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now as a concession, not a command, I say this. As humans, we have the flesh and the spirit. We have needs in both. Don't focus too much on one aspect of your life that you forget the other. The husband and wife should encourage one another to have more time with the Lord and to have time to each for each other to fight against the schemes of Satan. <clears throat> Marriage can become a spiritual battleground, so we need to have enough time for God and time for one another. Paul allowed husband and wives to have a limited time where they were not have be close together so that they have devote your, themselves to prayer and Satan often enters into the sexual relationship with husband and wife so that it causes them to sin against God. Satan encourages other relationships outside of marriage and to decrease sex in marriage. Satan dis encourages people to have sex outside of marriage and to discourage people to have sex inside of marriage. But in contrast, the Word of God teaches us never have any relation sexual relationship outside of marriage. And you must have enough sexual relationship in marriage. In marriage, the husband and wife can help each other to be victorious in this aspect. And by the help of God, we can accomplish this. So the next... Uh, verses talk about singleness, happiness, even if we are single, as Paul is, whether they have a wife or don't have a wife, like Paul. We see that Paul, he says, he encourages, live as single if you have that gift, if you have that gift. In 1 Corinthians 7, 7 to 8, I wish that all were as my, I myself am, but each has his own gift from God one of one kind and one of another. To the unmarried and to the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. To be married and, or to be single, each has its own benefits. Each has its own gift. Some have the gift to have a wife or a husband, and the other has a gift to be single. It's a gift that God gives. The one who is single can can devote their time, their entire life, to serve the Lord. As the Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 7, 32-34, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. If the Lord allows you to have a husband or a wife, then find ways to to meet the needs of your husband or wife or please them. But those who do not get married, who are unmarried, you have you have more time uh, not to go to movies or to travel around the world or to work more to have more money. No, it is more time so that you can serve the Lord. The one who lives unmarried lives for Christ. And if you think that you have the spiritual gift to live single, then offer your life to serve the Lord. But that does not mean that you are more spiritual than other people. It's not that you have no husband or wife that you are more spiritual. If you feel that you need to be married, then you are not less spiritual. It is the gift that God gives. Get married if that is what you want. But if you don't want to, you know, uh, if you want to get married, don't say that, oh, I want to be more spiritual, therefore I will stay single. No. For in 1 Corinthians 7, 9 says, if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. If you are easily burned by with passion, then get married. But it's not that you see a woman and you follow her and you marry. No, it's very dangerous. For love, Uh, 
There is a, a trend that people think that they, in the past, um, think that oh, it's not good for them. According to the National International Religion Report, before marriages occur, often in America, men and women live with each other before marriage, and they have found that this is more harmful than not. Those marriages, those who are, have lived together before marriage, divorce is higher in those marriages than those who do not have sex before marriage. Even in Christians, among Christians, some people think that it's okay for them to live before marriage, live together before marriage. But I want to encourage you young people, this is something that God does not allow. And this is the what the Lord, uh, the Paul, Apostle Paul wants the people in Corinth to say, see that they cannot live, uh, have sex outside of marriage. If their passion is so great that they cannot control, I'm sorry. So, basically, if <laughs> there is nothing that can replace the true love that we have within marriage. There are some people who are worried that they do not have harmony in their marriage in the Lord, and they don't feel blessed or either in the singleness. But the Lord wants to give you peace in your mind. You are at peace knowing that God wants your marriage to be lasting. The Lord says so. The Lord does not allow divorce. The Lord wants your marriage to be lasting. In verse 10 to 11, To the married I give this charge, not I, but the Lord. The Lord has given this. The wife shall not separate from her husband, but if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and the husband should not divorce his wife. The commandment of the Lord teaching us is for us to keep that we are to not divorce. In Matthew 5.32, But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. In verse 9, Chapter 19, verse 9, And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. This is what the Lord Jesus has taught very clearly, and the Apostle Paul repeats, that the wife cannot divorce his wife, her wife, her husband, but if so, must live that way and not get married. That is the teaching clearly of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second is that God wants us to experience peace, knowing that you don't have to divorce your unbelieving spouse. Some say, oh, I'm the temple of the Lord, and if I take this temple of the Lord to unite with one who is not a believer, then you are uniting with the unbelieving. In 1 Corinthians 7, 12, 13 says, To the rest I say, If any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. If any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. This is the situation where there were people in the past, they did not believe in Christ yet before marriage. But then after marriage, one was one would come to the Lord, and so they're in a marriage with an unbeliever. And so the Lord says, do not divorce your spouse if they are willing to live with you. Jesus does not teach that one who has... Jesus is not, is not teaching here that a person who is a believer to go marry an unbeliever. No, that's not teaching right here. Jesus did not teach directly this, but here Jesus taught through the Apostle Paul 
having the authority as if the、uh, Lord Jesus is teaching this. This Jesus did not speak upon, but the Lord used Paul to teach to the believers in Corinth. Here, this is the word of the Lord Jesus, not the apostles' words. He affirmed that this is the word of the Trinity, the Spirit of God teaching through the apostle Paul. Here, the Lord says that this is not the situation of those who are believers and get married with an unbeliever. For when we compare, First、uh, Corinthians seven thirty nine says, "A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes, only in the Lord." So we see that that one who is a widower or divorced, but a, by a, it applies to all believers that we are to only marry those in the Lord. Don't ever marry someone who is out of the Lord. Though they say they have religion, but if they don't have the Lord Jesus, do not marry them. Maybe they follow the religion. Maybe they kneel down and pray and、uh, baptize, but they don't obey the Lord. <laughs> There's a saying that oh, I pray to God. I kneel down and pray that I have a mar a wife. And I will leave the church. So we need to kneel down. We have to really see if that person has truly repented and ask the Lord Jesus to truly become the Lord and Savior of their life. Do not commit the sin that you will marry an unbeliever, for you will suffer all your life, and you will not please the Lord, and you will not be able to glorify your life, for your life will be full of sufferings and pain. If the husband or wife is willing to continue to live in marriage with the believer, then the believer cannot divorce. And the Lord wants you to have peace, peace, because you have the prospect to of bringing your unbelieving spouse to the Lord. In First Corinthians seven fourteen to sixteen. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy because of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to peace. God has called you to peace. To The word peace here is to live in harmony, to live in peace in your soul. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? So when we are faithful to follow the Lord and obey Him, who knows? God may use you to bring the unbelieving husband or wife to Him. The believers in Corinth, they say, think that when they sleep with their husband or wife. They, unbelieving husband or wife, they will be uh, uh, evil. But no, this is a could be a transformation. For this is a good influence that the husband and the wife may come to the Lord and be saved, and their children will be led in the teachings of the Lord, so that they will come to know the Lord. So we see two situations in the Old Testament. We see those who are sinful. And those who touch the sinful person will be sin for themselves. But amazingly, if the sacrifice become touches the the altar, that sacrifice becomes holy. So here it says that we are set apart, separated for Christ. If the two in the past did not come to the Lord yet, and after marriage one become comes to know the Lord, and becomes holy, that person. The unbelieving spouse will not be saved until they bow down before the Lord and receive the Lord as Savior and be saved. But because the unbelieving spouse is in relationship to the holy person, then they will become holy. In love, God wants us to have what? First of all, harmony in marriage, and second is to have happiness. In singleness, if that is the situation that the Lord gives you at the present, and thirdly is that we must have 
harmony or peace in the soul. The Lord loves you and is concerned about you, though you have are married or single, or that you have a spouse that is a believer or non-believer. The Lord is concerned about you and cares for you and wants you to live how to be pleasing to the Lord, so that you will receive His blessings. Be at peace in what the Lord has prepared for you in your present circumstance. Obey the word of God, and you will receive the blessings of those who obey the Lord. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Our heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for loving us, to pay attention to every detail of our lives, in our present situation of each of our lives. There are some who are living in marriage with those who fear the Lord and have a harmony. In their marriage, happiness in their marriage, and there are those, Lord, that are in uh, their single life, or because of a divorce or a widower that they are single. But Lord, we have you, Lord, and you are our comfort and our joy in our life, and we are at peace in you, Lord. And Lord, those amongst us who wants to be married, who wants to have a spouse. Who wants to build a marriage in the Lord with、uh, brothers and sisters in Christ? Lord, open the door so they will find a person, a spouse who fears you, Lord, who will walk in your ways, Lord, and serve you. And Lord, we pray for those who are the young ones growing in your church here, that they will meet young people who will love you, Lord, and will marry those in the Lord as you have taught. And rescue, save our young people from、um, marrying those who are unbelievers, Lord, or having premarital sex. Father, have have mercy, Lord, so that those who have loved ones who do not have, who do not know you, Lord, a husband or a wife who do not know you, Lord, help us, Lord, to have a holy life, a life that is. Holy, sanctify, set apart for you, Lord, so that our lives will have a good influence on our spouse. So that through that we can bring our spouse to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We are so grateful to you, Lord. Live in us, Lord, and reveal your glory through our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray this. Amen.